everyone. My name is Liliana Moreno, and today I will be discussing neural circuits. This presentation will be based off our course material and things I have researched on my own. Let's begin by discussing the anatomy of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is part of the central nervous system and is the extension of the nervous tissue within the vertebral column. Spinal nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. They extend off the spinal cord at regular intervals. Axons from the spinal nerve enter the posterior side of the spinal cord through the dorsal nerve roots. I will be discussing axons later on in the presentation, but let's continue with the anatomy of the spinal cord. The next thing I will discuss is the spinal nerves. The dorsal root of the spinal nerves contain the dorsal root of the ganglion, where cell bodies of the neurons are located. Axons then emerge from the anterior side of the spinal nerve through the ventral nerve root. The spinal nerve enters the posterior side of the spinal cord through the dorsal nerve root. On this slide, I will discuss the regions of the spinal cord. The length of the spinal cord is divided into regions that correspond to the vertebral column, vertebral column. The name of the region corresponds to the levels at which spinal nerves pass through the inner vertebral formina. The cervical region is found in the neck. The thoracic region is found in the thorax. The lumbar region is found in the lower back and the sacral region is found in the pelvis. Humans have 31 paired spinal nerves. The nerves that emerge from the spinal cord pass through the inner vertebral formina. The verte vertebral column grows. The nerves grow and result in a long bundle of nerves within the vertebral column named the cauda equina. Next, we will discuss neural tissues. The spinal cord can be divided into two types of neural tissues. First, I will discuss the gray matter. The gray matter occurs when neural tissue contains cell bodies and unmyelinated axons of neurons. The protrusion of gray matter is uh, the protrusions of gray matter are referred to as horns. You can see the horns on the image here on the side. The dorsal horns extend posteriorly, the lateral horns extend laterally, and the ventral horns extend anteriorly. The second neural tissue is white matter. White matter contains a bundle of myelinated axon of neurons traveling up or down the spinal cord. These bundles within the CNS can be referred to as tracks. These tracks can be referred to as ascending, meaning they carry a signal from the spinal nerve to the brain, or they can be descending, meaning they carry signals from the brain to the spinal cord. White matter is separated into columns. These columns extend along its continuous bands of white matter. You could view the columns again on this image. The posterior column is between the two posterior horns of the gray matter. The anterior column are between the anterior horns and the lateral columns are on either side of the spinal cord between the posterior horn and the axons of the anterior horn neurons. The meninges is the outer surface of the CNS covered by a series of three membranes membranes composed of connective tissue that protect the brain and the spinal cord. The dura matter is the outermost layer that is a thick fibrous layer and a strong protective sheath over the entire brain. The arachnoid matter is the middle layer. It is a membrane of thin fibrous tissue that forms a loose sac around the CNS. The subdural space is the space between the dura matter and the arachnoid matter. The pia matter is adjacent to the surface of the CNS innermost layer and is a thin fibrous membrane. 
The subarachnoid space is the space between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter. It is filled with circulating cerebral spinal fluid that protects and cushions the brain and spinal cord. Now that you are familiar with the anatomy of the spinal cord, let's discuss how neurons function together to allow communication in the body. Neurons communicate using both electrical and chemical signals, which I will discuss further in the following slides. Let's first destruct the parts and structures of neurons. Axons are por portions of a nerve cell that carry nerve impulses away from the cell body. Dendrites are short arm-like protru protrudence from a nerve. They are appendage-like that are designed to receive communication from other cells. And the cell body is the nucleus containing central parts of of neurons. It is exclusive of its axon and dendrites. The structure of a neuron can, can either be multi, a multipolar neuron. These are the most common types of neuron. They are located in the CNS and autonomic ganglia. These neurons have more than two processes emanating from the neuron cell body. The next type is bipolar neurons. It has two extensions, one in the axon and one in the dendrites, specializing in sensory neurons from transmission of sense. The next one is the pseudo-unipolar neuron. It has one extension from its cell body. In the image of part B, you could see the structure of the neurons. And part A, you can see the axon, dendrites, and cell body. Now that you know the parts and the structure, let's, let's discuss how neurons and control the body. The first major function of the nervous system is sensation. This receives information on the environment to gain input about what is happening outside and or within the body. It recognizes presence of change. This change is known as a stimulus. These stimulus can be described as the big five senses we often think about. Those senses are listed right here on the slide and are taste, smell, touch, sight, and hearing. Then the nervous system produces a response on the basis of the stimulus perceived by the sensory structure. An example of this would be muscle contraction or movement. The responses can either be voluntary, voluntary are governed by the somatic nervous system, or it can be involuntary, which are governed by the autonomic nervous system. When the stimulus are received by the sensory structure and are communicated to the nervous system, the information is processed and this is known as integration. Integration leads to a specific response to be formed. It links, it links sensory perception to a motor response. Let's classify these neurons. Sensory neurons are involved in sensation and pass electrical signal towards the CNS. They are afferent and can be either pseudo-unipolar or bipolar. Motor neurons are involved in response and pass electrical signals away from the CNS towards a target. That target can either be muscle or glandular cells. They are always multipolar. Inner neurons form connection between sensory and motor neurons. 
They are always multipolar. They can be found only within the CNS. Most of the brain and spinal cord is made up of billions of inner neurons. The inner neurons allow all of the complicated things our brains can do. Now that we discuss how all these components come together, let's review a scenario of neural circuits. Neural circuits are a group of neurons that interconnect and carry out specific function. Let's examine the neural circuits with the image on this slide. We will evaluate what happens when someone touches a cactus. The first question is which neuron responds to sensation and how? Viewing the image, we can see that neuron A will respond to the sensation, which is pain from the prickling of the cactus to the skin. It sends a signal through action potential back to the CNS. Question two, which neuron receives and sends signal? How does this neuron do it? And where does it send the signal to? We can see based on the image that neuron B receives the signal and sends an actual action potential to neuron C. And we can see that this occurs within the CNS. Question three, which neuron sends signals out from the CNS? We could see that neuron B is sending the signal to neuron C, which means neuron C sends the signal out from the CNS through action potential to a group of muscles, which leads us to our next question. What is the target for this neuron and what does it do? We identified that the target for this particular scenario is the muscle cell. The muscle cell is the target and it causes the muscle to contract. Meaning, when you put your hand on the cactus, it will respond and remove your hand from the painful stimulus, which is the prickling of the cactus. This slide is my references to the presentation. And that is all. I hope you guys learned a little more about neural circuits. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a great day.